in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you Her graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Lift your hands everywhere. Let's give him all the praise and glory because he's mighty. Hallelujah. Can we bless him for his faithfulness upon our lives? And upon this ministry everywhere all of the overflows lift your hands to heaven as a family of faith i like us to come before him with thanksgiving lord we thank you thank you jesus for the mighty miracles thank you for breakthroughs healings deliverances hallelujah praise the lord the bible says in john chapter 3 how that nicodemus came to jesus by night and said rabbi we know thou art a man sent from god he said for no man can do these things except god be with him hallelujah in just one or two minutes i'd like you to mention everything you know he has done in your life the bible says um, it is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord he said to sing his praise in the morning go ahead don't just say I thank you Lord I thank you for life lift your voice and bless his name mighty God Lord we bow to you you are mighty give you all the praise all the praise all the praise libombras kadabalato sedebalika porasudiaba you are strong and you are mighty in our midst there is no man that can do these things except you be with him Hallelujah. Isaiah 58. Oh, 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 oh. serious encounter this morning please listen I it was a very dramatic experience it was very strange I was driving a car and in that car thank you, someone asked me to come down and shook my hands and then a bigger car came 
And he said, step in. And I saw written on the car koinonia. And the Lord said, I will begin to magnify this ministry before the eyes of the world. That's what the Lord told me this morning. He said, I will magnify you by myself. Let, let me tell you, when God begins to magnify a man, you will sit down and search around. Searched all over, couldn't find no power. I looked high and low, still couldn't find nobody. Nobody great, nobody great, nobody greater than you. Sing it, I searched all over, searched all over, couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low. Hallelujah. Listen, the thing that the Lord will begin to do in this ministry will scare some of you. Write it down. You don't hear me speak like this all the time. The Lord himself told me, I will begin to magnify this ministry. Why he does it, we can only be grateful and give him thanks. But you will see miracles and breakthroughs and lives and destinies change. I'd like you to lift your voice and say, Lord, I tap into that prophecy. I must be a partaker. Everyone inside and outside, please pray. The Bible says they heard the word just like we did, but the word did not profit them because it was not mixed with faith. Lord, we tap into it. We believe your word. You are not a man. You are not a politician. You are not looking for an office. Hallelujah. Listen. My Bible says, God is not a man that he should lie. He said, no, is he the son of man? This year he gave us a word and he said, it's a year of multiplied grace. Brothers and sisters, I want you to develop your faith level to a point where you become stupid enough to believe God. And say, Lord, if I perish, I perish. Now you be God, almighty God. You know be my Lord. You know be my Lord. Now you be God. Almighty God. You know be my Lord. Sing it as a prophecy. Yeah. Lord, we believe. The one that speaks and has the ability to make it come to pass. Listen to me. Prophecy. Listen, please. Prophecy is not prediction. You see, you know, people in the world, when a man of God says something, they say a man of God predicted. Prophecy is not prediction. 
is 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 witches and wizards that do that prophecy listen prophecy is enforcing a spiritual reality so that it can find physical expression something that has been finished in the heavens and so god creates a system with which you stamp it on earth i told you there are two dimensions to the prophetic there is the revelatory dimension of the prophetic and the goal of the revelatory dimension of the prophetic is to give you direction to build your faith and to provide supernatural solutions so the word of knowledge the gift of prophecy work hand in hand to reveal the revelatory dimension but the most superior dimension of the prophetic is the creative dimension of the prophetic listen the creative dimension of the prophetic does not inform you about what is to happen it makes it happen are we together now so it doesn't say god wants to do something so i'm giving you an advanced awareness no the creative dimension of prophecy makes things happen listen i want you to get this i will keep drumming it till it enters your spirit please come pastor alpha watch this if hold this handkerchief hide it from me the revelatory dimension of the prophetic can say pastor alpha you are holding a white handkerchief and he will look and say wow and i say wow you are holding a handkerchief that's revelation but creation is that you don't have a handkerchief the word puts it there that's creation listen so i'm not it's not informing you about what there was no possibility for that thing to happen so listen i need to encourage you because you see many of us the only condition to believe the word of god is if it is only a revelation of something you already suspect to happen for instance if i say your uncle will bless you you just put two and two and oh my uncle called me this morning so that's what god was trying to say so you believe it but if you don't have any uncle and then i tell you the bible says strangers will feed your flock now listen it becomes difficult to believe it are you seeing now so it's not the power of god it's the faith to receive that dimension of prophecy that's why we are fasting it has never been about the power of god but that your faith level rejects it it says as many as received him meaning you can reject it hallelujah so if i speak to you now and i say um by the grace of god somebody his name is benga will favor you you know somebody called benga even if it's not this one i was referring to at least that knowledge just gives you some succor but when i tell you my brother god says he's changing your story and it does not rest on any anchor you just say amen but the truth is you don't believe it that's what happened to these jam students you see it has nothing believe me there are there are mysteries in this kingdom are you god can veto your faith level and use an anointing bring you into it and produce a possibility that would not have happened by your own faith samuel listen saul came and came under samuel's anointing it had nothing to do with his personal faith the spirit of prophecy fell he prophesied naked from morning till night Are we together now you see but the problem many times is we don't believe i'm telling you unbelief is a dangerous thing that's why we are fasting you may never know how far god wants to take you until you have the rugged faith to say lord let's go for it let's go for it i don't have anybody so as god is saying i will lift you you are not saying oh god that there's my uncle stop all that nonsense i'm telling you god can do anything he carried a raven brought it when we say god can heal you from that cancer in your mind you are saying oh that's why an expert doctor came from india i now see Hi. i have learned to believe god if i die today i did not die in unbelief i died believing god I have I have made up my mind 
that it is this God Almighty, I will believe him. When God speaks to me, I, I become the most stupid person you can ever find around. Because if I hear him, that's it. We run, if we perish, we perish. See, all this mechanical nonsense that you see people do, this overstretching of, of intellectualism and science. Oh God, show me how it will happen. He said, you shall not see rain. You shall not see wind. Please, I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, raise my faith level. I'm tired of doubting you. Pray, Koinonia. Those outside, no matter how far you are, the first overflow, second, third, pray. Lord, we believe your word. We are believers. We are believers. You be God. Father, we are believers. We believe your word. We honor your word. We honor its ability to change our lives. Lord, we thank you tonight because you will radically transform us. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. Please sit down. Hallelujah. God's obsession is to find a people who can believe him. God's obsession is to find a people who can look above and beyond the encumbrances of their lives and say, Lord, I believe you. Not that I am believing you. I believe you. If I talk to Sam and I say, Sam, come and collect 5,000 naira from me. The first thing Sam would do is to, in his mind, he will size me. Is that true? And ask himself, does this guy have the ability to provide 5,000 naira? Are we together? His response now becomes the conclusion. His response now becomes the conclusion of his finding. If he looks at me and I look like someone who can provide 5,000, then he will believe me. If I stretch him a little more and I say, Sam, come and collect 500,000, then he will look at me. What evidence can I find in this man's life that can give me a point of confidence that he can provide? I, I am okay with 5,000, but can he provide 500,000. 
Are we together? Then if I say, Sam, come and collect 50 million from me. Are we together? The same thing. He will now look at me and say, Is this, can this guy be worth 50 million? Not to talk of giving it away. So he, the limit, the peg to which his mind can tell him, look, this is how far this guy can go. Is how much he's able to believe me. So when God says, I will do A, he says, but God, I believe that. Then God steps off the bar. Then he comes to a point where you say, ah, God, it's not like I don't want to believe you, but you too, if you were me, would you believe? What you are telling God is, I have searched everything about you. This is the limit of what I've seen that you can do. One of the blessings of fasting is that there is a serious warfare on unbelief. It challenges your capacity to believe God. Because it's usually our interaction with the sensory realm. This excessive interaction with the sensory realm that is responsible for our unbelief. A little boy who grows up with a herbalist will usually find it very easy to believe anything. He's seen a goat disappear. He's seen a fowl appear. He saw key appear. Are we together? He saw a material appear from nowhere. And they handed it over to someone. So his mind has become accustomed to that possibility. That's why testimonies are powerful. The reason why they build faith in you is because when you hear of what God has done, all of a sudden, there is a physical person who is telling you, God did this thing in my life. And then you can believe it. Hallelujah. I welcome everyone tonight. I won't be teaching for too long. We're going to be praying tonight. This is the first day. For those of you who do not know, media help us. Um, we have seven days of fasting. And this is not a religious activity. It was directed and orchestrated by God. Verse 6, Isaiah 58, verse 6. There are people who do all sorts of fasting. Please give us verse 5. It starts by contrasting the various people fast and pray. Most times we fast, we pray, but we are not able to generate any serious energy in the spirit. And at the end of it, we just feel religious. We starve ourselves of food. But then nothing really happens. And here's what the Lord says. Is it such a fast as I have chosen? He's, he's challenging something that he's seen the people doing and they are calling it fasting number one he said is it a day for a man to just afflict his soul he's asking you a question do you think what i desire is your hunger starvation is that really where the power is am i interested in just seeing you starve yourself of food and look miserable and lose weight is the power and the result just in starving yourself he said, is it to bow down his head as a bulrush and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? It's a question he's asking. Is it just a time to look pious? Your mouth is dry. Your face is oily. You're not wearing any nice clothes. Is that the idea of biblical fasting? Because many people think that's where the power is. They think by doing all of those religiosities, it is equivalent to um, showing that you are being spiritual. And here the prophet by the spirit is telling us no. He said, will thou call this a fast and an acceptable day unto the Lord? Then verse 6, he tells us the kind of fast that commands result in the spirit. Is not this the kind of fast that I have chosen, commanded, directed, selected? 
he says to lose the bands of wickedness to undo the heavy burdens and to let the oppressed go free and that ye break every yoke is this not the kind of fast i've commanded is there not a cause is it not because of something i desire to be done that i call a people to come and fast that means i want to do this but something is restraining me i have the power their fasting does not give me power their fasting only steps up their own their their belief system to a point where they are able to align with me and agree with me to do to do this and to birth this to lose the bands of wickedness hallelujah there is a kind of fast koinonia that produces dramatic results in the life of a man there is a kind of fast that only gives a man a sense of spirituality so that you stand among your contemporaries and say kai do you know we are fasting to mean do you know i'm spiritual and then it becomes like a a competitive advantage so the other person feels well i'm not fasting when the person is eating you are rattling in tongues and you shout it loud so the person feels so guilty we are pressing into god you are here eating that's a carnal fleshly nonsense kind of fast that will end up frustrating you because that person will be eating but he will eat his way to breakthroughs and you are there starving are we together now and that's why many people get angry with god because they now say god i can't understand this is two weeks i've been stretching this is three weeks i've been stretching but nothing is happening we need to understand that there is a the, the major purpose i'm telling you this the major purpose of fasting is to address the issue of unbelief because that's really the limitation it is never has never and will never be the absence or the limitation of the power of god jesus never at any point in scripture says my faith has made you whole he said your faith your capacity to believe me has made my power available your faith your faith your belief your ability to agree with me i love the centurion he said no 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 no. you don't need to come to my house for i am also just like you a man under authority i understand the implication of being under authority i can tell one go and he will go i can tell one come and he will come so just like you i know you are under the father's authority and if you speak the government of heaven is committed to backing you and jesus said i've not found this faith no not in israel i've not found somebody who has this construction of understanding about me hallelujah this fast was supposed to happen in february but for some reason the lord kept shifting it shifting it and supernaturally it just fell to this point and um the interesting thing is that on the last day on the of the first koinonia will be five years exactly exactly five years 11th of march hallelujah see what god has done in five years supernaturally by the spirit of god and so we are going to pray please listen everybody will participate in this fasting this will be one week of strange you you can call it miracle imagine miracle service on steroids for seven days that's what is going to be happening beginning from today is is a time of intense results strange manifestations of answered prayer you see let me tell you we don't serve god because we are looking for results but I guarantee you, your service to God will be impeded by repeated cycles of lack of result. There is, there is nothing more convincing than a man having a testimony of himself and say, I believed God. This is the result. I trusted God. This is the result. 
strange manifestations of his power strange manifestations of revival and awakening hallelujah and so i'd like you to know that we're in for a flight from today till friday today is a communion service we're going to take communion and i'm taking our time to explain this to us because i don't want us to be careless and rash just to do this spiritually we must do it intentionally now beginning from tomorrow we are going to be gathering here every night 8 to 10 just to pray 8 to 10 from tomorrow till friday 8 to 10 it will be a time of intense prayer intense prayer we are praying to break through let me give us a few guidelines that will help us in this fast um you will need to connect to our Facebook page for those of you who are not there, Facebook, Twitter, so that you can get the updates. Number one is that your fasting must be backed up by quality times of the word, word study, intense worship, and prayer. These three things, please don't waste your time. Just wake up in the morning and sleep from 10, and then wake up quarter to four, and you almost cannot endure. And once it's time, you just rush orange, banana, and this. No, no, you are deceiving yourself. We are not playing games. You can, it's better to just eat. Fasting is hunger strike until it is backed up with a quality time of worship you know we've lost the art of worship we pray a lot but we have thrown away worship once upon a time it was the other way around people can worship but they may not have strength to pray now people pray i mean people can pray almost as if they are drunk but we throw away worship believing that prayer just by itself will cover for it you know i've taught us here one truth in the kingdom does not cover for the absence of another truths in the kingdom are like blocks of a building every truth has its jurisdiction of function and when it is kept within that jurisdiction it profits the believer the moment a truth is taken and stretched beyond its jurisdiction it becomes erroneous and it destroys the recipient hallelujah so i cannot hold on to one reality of the spirit that i've gotten and just believe that is all there is to God. And argue every other possibility. No. Truths in the kingdom are like building blocks. One upon another. You don't throw another block just because you have one on your hand. They complement, not replace. They complement, not replace. That replacement mindset is what has gotten a lot of people in error. So they carry certain truths of the Bible kick it away and then they camp around a dimension and the possibilities of god in their lives are only limited to the dimension they have allowed him to find expression whereas there can be more hallelujah so an intense time of word study an intense time of prayer pray in tongues pray seriously hallelujah number two Every day of the fasting, these were things that the Lord spoke to me. I'm communicating to us. Every day of the fasting, when you are breaking your fast, you should first break with the communion before your food. Not yam, not egg. Just listen. Let's be stupid enough to obey God. Are we together? Not orange, not banana. Communion. Communion, anything can represent prophetically. Doesn't have to be that. Um, at least everybody here should be able to part of your spiritual arsenal should be a communion kit are we together you have trainers you have jacket for cold you have first aid box with panadol you don't have a communion set that the bible tells you is a mystery that connects you you should have it so write it now you should provide it's part of the spiritual arsenals it's not just some religious things no hallelujah I'll give us scriptures for this it's very important the lord told me so every day you break before we come 
the time we are placing to break our fast is four o'clock. We put four o'clock. Four o'clock is a fair benchmark so that the workers can refresh themselves, rest, and do a few things for that time. So four o'clock, you start um, in the morning to four o'clock. So that's what is going to happen. Hallelujah. You break with communion. Don't just carry um, um, wafers through in your mouth and just gob zobo. No, 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 no. There's an attitude. There is an understanding. Lord, this is your body according to John 6. Please, I'm teaching you this. I want us to receive maximum results so that we don't waste our time for nothing. Father, I believe. I'll give you the scripture. Yeah, okay. It's, it's projected there. Jesus said, if you do not eat of my flesh and drink of my blood, you have no part in me. I connect you by this mystery so that whatever is in me and is not in you, by this communion, you come into that reality. And whatever is not in me and is in you must die and dry up by that mystery. In theology, we call it the doctrine of interpenetration. I've taught us this. It's the same mystery that happens in marriage. The mystery where two people become one. And the child that comes from them is the evidence of their oneness. So God tells you, I look at your life and I see certain things. Please understand this. And then the communion also is an opportunity to apply the mystery of the blood. The blood is powerful. Every day, listen, Please don't miss this for any reason. One of the things we are going to be learning, I will be showing you deep mysteries of prayer. Dimensions in the spirit where you can touch certain things in the heavens even as we pray. The prophetic dimension of prayer. Not just praying carelessly. I say, God, this is your word. What is all this? Mm. The prophetic dimension of prayer. Shiba Kapura. Hallelujah. Number three. Media, since you're projecting, help us with it. Okay, that's for our online community. That all of the prayer focus will be posted on our Facebook page. According to Habakkuk 2.2, 2, it says, write the vision, whatever the Lord has told you. Make it plain so that those who read it will be able to run with it. Don't confuse the people when they will run with it only when they understand. Number four. Now, this is important. Please look up. The last two days of the fasting will be a marathon fast. Look up and let me explain it to you. A marathon fast, it will start from 10 p.m. Once we finish our prayer here on Wednesday, we are not eating again. Dry fast, complete dry. No food, no water, no nothing till Friday by 12 p.m. 12 noon in the afternoon. Marathon fast. Let me explain to you. Don't just think that we are, we are starving you. You see, there are mysteries we don't understand in the kingdom. Unfortunately, many of we men of God, when we don't understand a thing, we don't humble ourselves to seek to find out. We castigate it and reject it. Is it in your Bible that certain people wanted Paul to die and they bound themselves with an oath that we will not eat, we will not drink water until Paul dies. What was the relationship between they are not eating, not drinking water, and the death of Paul? When Esther was ready to go before the king, she told Mordecai, say, announce to the camp, declare a fast three days, no food, no water. Declare a fast. Our scientific Christianity is why we are not powerful. I'm telling you. We jump. We, we spit on mics. We spit on people. But there's nothing we release of substance. Because we lack the requirements. Whether you believe God or not. He will never bend to your standard. So we are praying. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 9. When you read that scripture, very, very powerful mysteries that happened. He said, and he was, this was Paul. Listen, I'm sharing with you a mystery. There was an encounter 
that Saul had at, as Paul. The Bible says he was on his way to Damascus. Are we together now? And then the Bible says, you know, light hit him, etc. He went to the house of Judah and the Bible says he was there. How many days? Three days. He said without sight, he neither ate nor, dr nor drank. And within that three days, something happened to him. Although blind physically, his, his eyes were opened spiritually. And he started having a vision. He saw a vision. And then you read verse, verse 11. And the Lord said to him, talking about um, um, uh, what's now Ananias. The Lord said unto him, Arise and go to a street called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judah for one brother Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he does what? So he was not just starving himself. He was praying three days. Prayer, no food, no water. And an encounter came. He encountered not just the opening of his eyes. After three days of praying and fasting, his eyes suddenly opened. The Bible says in Isaiah 58, he said, Then shall your light break forth. There is something that fasting does to your capacity, your organs of interaction with the realm of the spirit, your capacity to receive the impulses of sight and sound in the spirit. When a man of God cannot hear, cannot see, cannot know, you are a dangerous man of God. Because anything can happen and you become a recipient of whatever just happens. The next point, please help us, media. Verse 5. Now, this is important. It's very instructive. I want everybody to participate in this. I was excited when the Lord told me already there have been testimonies. Mighty testimonies. The Lord told me that we should write down two sets of prayer lists. Please listen. Two sets. The first should be a list of your desires and expectations. According to Philippians chapter 4 verse 6. It says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. It says, make your request known, not assume it is known. Make it known. Tell God, this is my desire. The Bible says that the expectation of thy heart, right? It says your expectation will not be cut off. And then the second should be a list of every challenge in your life. That you believe must come to an end. Second Kings please. 19 verse 14 to 16. The second is a list. We are going to be doing a lot of prophetic things. In the course of this fasting. A lot of prophetic things. It will be remarkable seven days. And Hezekiah listen. The Bible says. Hezekiah was a king. Right? Just a little background. And now Hezekiah was being threatened. In fact, let's, can we take it from verse 12? Is it possible, please? Just, just back up two verses and let's, let's start from there. Listen. They were mocking Hezekiah. And look at the mockery. Have the gods of the nations delivered them which my fathers have destroyed? As Gozan and Haran and Rezelf and the children of Eden. You know, they were mocking. They were saying, Hezekiah, you think your God will protect you. Have you not seen what we did to other nations? Next verse, please. Where is the king of Hamath? He was telling Hezekiah. There was a king just like you who was bragging that we will not hit him and we finished him. We are on our way coming. He says, and the king of Abhad and the, and the king of the city of, you know, all of those names and then 14. And Hezekiah received the letter in the hand of messengers. When your enemy is bold to threaten you and he sends a letter, I'm coming. The Bible says, Hezekiah received the letter. I like him. He read it. He ran to the house of the Lord. What did he do? The Bible says he spread it. He opened it and said, God read it. Next verse, 15. And Hezekiah prayed. 
with the letter open before God. He said, O Lord God of Israel, which dwelleth between the cherubims, thou art, you see, once Ezekiah was wise. Let me tell you something about God. I'll be teaching you this as we pray. The dimension of God you want to see, you invoke it in praise. You, if you want God to appear as a mighty God, there is what you tell him. David knew this. Hezekiah knew this. They wanted him to rise up as a warrior and say, God, you dwell in the midst of cherubims. And then he says, thou art God, even thou alone. In other words, somebody is trying to be you here. Lord, where are you? Stand up and answer to your name. He says, of all the kingdoms of the earth, thou hast made the heavens and the earth. Verse 16. Lord, he said, bow down your ear. See how a man is praying. Not foolishly, praying intelligently out of faith. Knowing he was talking to somebody who was mighty enough. Lord, bow down your ear and hear. Then he says, open Lord thy eyes and see. And hear the words of that man, you know, which had sent him to reproach who? Smart man. He never said to reproach me. He said, God, you are in trouble. You better be aware. I am representing you and something is threatening your name. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, if you want God to arise, take flesh out of his way and say, God, defending me is promoting your interest if you let me fall down you are the one who the, that's what moses told him he said abba god you better repent of this your anger you want them to say you brought people out killed firstborns and did not have the power to continue and the bible said god repented because a man knows how to talk to God. Do you know how to talk to God? There are some of us, you talk to God and at the end, even you, you feel like God was not listening to you because there is an art. That's why the Bible says we know not how to pray. There is a way to talk to God. When you go to a CEO, you don't talk foolishly. Sir, I didn't get my, my salary. The man will say you are a bad staff. That you have an attitude. You knock the office, you step in. And the Bible says we don't even know how to talk to God. So the spirit of God comes to help us so that we can tell God what will force him to respond to us. Hallelujah. And so the Lord told me there's nothing we do that is outside the word of God. We call them mysteries in the kingdom. You read them as stories but only the spirit of God can show you the mystery behind their operation. Hallelujah. And then on the final day on Friday, the second list that represents the challenges in our lives, we are going to set it on fire. According to Exodus chapter 14, please. Exodus 14, 14 and 15. Kabbalah katabayana. And Moses said to the people, fear not. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you. But verse 13, please. 13. Where, where were you before you moved? Was it 14 or 13? Okay, 13. Which he will show you today. He said, for the Egyptians, whom ye have seen today, you shall not see them again forever. Not for three years. That's why we are born in it. And it goes and goes forever. Hmm. Hallelujah. The Lord showed me that it will be already. I've made my own list. I've, I finished making my list yesterday night. Two lists. Please be childlike enough to do this and watch the mighty God that we serve arise for you. Most times we don't heed to instructions. And that spirit of rebellion, oftentimes, is what is responsible for our not receiving results. Because when you come to the kingdom, you must be childlike. Not childish. Childlike. Have the heart and the receptivity of a child. And you will watch God arise and move in power. Hallelujah. Every day we are going to be having a prayer focus. 
we'll be posting it online and we're going to pray eight o'clock beginning from today it's already past eight so we'll soon start praying hallelujah we're going to pray and it's going to be strategic listen from tomorrow once you just come don't even wait for the service to start already by 7 30 worship is already playing and soaking the atmosphere praise the lord once you just come start blasting in tongues and praying don't just come and be pinching and waiting for somebody to say hallelujah or praise the lord we're coming to pray just a little time of worship um maybe testimonies will take testimonies offering offering is important don't come empty-handed i just remembered offering prayer times times of fasting and prayers are times that go on with sacrifice already i've been thinking of what i'm going to do in this season something that that will catapult me to the next level of my life and destiny hallelujah we're going to do our best to make sure that we work on the transportation and all of this but please i want you to invite everybody you love no even if you have to stand on our heads no problem but god wants to bring serious breakthrough hallelujah just give me the next 10 minutes to give us direction and then we'll pray tonight our focus is encounter with power listen encounter with power how that fasting can drive a man to the place of an encounter with the power of the holy spirit why do need why do we need power because there are giants on every mountain please listen there are giants on every mountain it takes the power of the holy spirit to subdue principalities and powers it takes the power of the holy spirit to rise and break through the emotional psychological and physical gravity that we face in our world today if you're born in our world today you know that just being alive puts you at a disadvantage being a nigerian in many respects puts you in a position there's nobody for you there are many of us here you don't have any father any mother there is nobody you are just alone with god it takes power to reign psalm 66 verse 3 psalm 66 verse 3 when we come from tomorrow we'll have people come to lead sessions we're going to spread it around so that we have as many people gentlemen ladies all together heads of department you know let's just have people so that we can even use it as an opportunity to give people room to also build even if you come and hold you see this altar you are seeing here you can come after service and dance around but once koinonia is here this altar you see requires power to hold this mic you are seeing you will come and stand here and be shaking and not even know what to do it takes capacity in the spirit to hold this mic you are seeing after the service you can come and play around and roll around but there is a mystery here when this service is on if you stand behind this mic and hold the mic you are really powerful believe me amen say unto god how terrible art thou in thy works listen it says through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves brothers and sisters it takes power bishop oyedeko began to um when you when you listen to his teachings and then in his book how that at a point living faith was not growing they did everything they knew to do living faith was not growing and then they gathered the brethren together and they were praying and the lord asked him he said come out walk with me and he walked and at a point he said turn and when he looked at the sky you know just above the church he saw a thick layer and the lord told him he said this is the layer that misrepresents your ministry do you know there is a spirit that misrepresents men before men 
every man of God, every pastor, every church know this. There is a spirit assigned to ministries to misrepresent what their idea, their agenda. You see what the Lord is doing here? It's because of the power of God. You don't know how much the devil has tried to misrepresent before men what we represent and what God is doing. You see, most pastors think that all there is to church growth is just to be able to heal the sick and do one or two miracles. There is a strange spirit that misrepresents people. I was sharing, I think, with the leaders that in Zaria here, listen, Zaria here, there is a spirit upon Kaduna State and Zaria. The validity of impact in this city is three years. Check your history. The moment you do anything after three years, they celebrate you every time and something happens in your life, crashes you and you're out. Musicians have, have risen from this city. Pastors have risen from this city. Businessmen have risen from this city. Nothing happens by the time you are rising. But you get to a height and something comes. It's a spirit. You see music artists that they invite to Zaria. Sometimes they come for like four weeks stretch. Different churches are inviting them. They celebrate them and they look like the spirit of the city all of a sudden. Their glory fades. How many groups have risen from this city? How many pastors have risen from this city? Consistent impact. There is a spirit that silences impact. Brothers and sisters, it takes power to remain relevant in a generation. It takes power. This applies to lives. It applies. You see it happen to lecturers. You see it happen to people. Great people rise to certain levels. And then mysterious things begin to happen. It takes power to reign. The only language that is understood in the realm of the spirit is the language of power. It takes power for you to prevail in life. He said, for as a prince, you have fought with God and you have prevailed. It takes power to remain in health. It takes power to ward off the arsenals. I jokingly used to tell a few people, only God can imagine the plots of darkness day and night over my life. Only when we get to heaven, I will know the amount of things that I've eaten that may be poison or are poisonous. Only God can tell the number of shrines where my name is invoked day and night. You cast out devils after miracle service. You are praying for the sick. I've spent years of my life laying my physical hands on people with communicable diseases. If I were faking it, you would know by now. The Bible says, and the first Adam was a living soul. It says, the second Adam is a life-giving spirit. Are we together? Everybody say, I need power in my life. Please say it. I need power in my life. You need power to do everything, including remaining alive in this wicked generation. You need power. Say, I need power. Please say it again. I need power. There are arrows that fly by day. There are noisome pestilences that fly by night. You go and sit down in a restaurant and eat. You don't even know the conviction of the person who cooked that food. You don't know where he got which charm to do what. You eat and say, Madam, one more wrap. You are just eating. It takes power to remain alive. Is God speaking to us? Right now, people are even afraid to move from one point to the other because they are afraid. What if my car capsides, brothers and sisters? A powerless Christian is already dead, not will die. He's already dead. It takes power. An encounter with power. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. It says, but you shall receive, meaning you can reject it. It is within your power to reject it. But you shall receive power. After
after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you and that empowerment will make you a witness you keep your heavens open I knew long enough or long ago that I needed power in my life as a young man doing ministry many things are against you by default you need power to remain relevant my work schedule is very tight believe you me there are many people if you do what i'm doing you will break down in three months it takes power this is not just food it takes power power manifested in different dimensions it takes power otherwise one day you will be sick you will not even know there are times men of god have stood on stage preaching and they collapsed and died it takes power power that superimposes the natural limitations of this body it is real hallelujah there are some of our family members who are in situations where it will take the power of god not discussion they don't need counseling they need a collision with power there there is darkness the first four days of this prayer we are going to dedicate it to intense spiritual warfare establishing prophecies over our lives please hear me everybody inside and outside god is giving us an opportunity to break through to break through to break through you must maximize it i made up my mind that within these seven days some things must my life must step into another dimension i vowed a vow before god this morning i said lord i will participate with all my heart You can argue it you can come around in the night and just watch people you can come around looking at the lady you like waiting for the prayer to finish so you escort her home you can come around selling uh, whatever food you have to sell outside you can come carelessly or you can come predetermined the bible says the woman said to herself she came she she didn't just bump into him she said if i may but touch the hem of his garment hallelujah we're going to pray there is a relationship between prayer and the release of spiritual power listen please there is a relationship between the ministry of prayer and the release of spiritual power truly speaking a prayerless christian is a powerless christian the, there are three areas that Satan attacks in your life. The moment you see these three areas under attack, know that your life is under intense attack. Number one, your passion for God. Your passion for God. Satan will not make you to be drinking and smoking and sleeping around. Oh, sometimes it's, it's too much. It's the backsliding is too, it's too much. It's like a plane just landing anyhow. You will realize it fast and come back. So he will take it gradually. The passion for God. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. It's a sign that my spirit is still in tune. When people are already backsliding and the, the, the spirit of revival is eroding from their life they lose favor and fire for the things of god and for the house of god number two your prayer life oh i'll pray by 10 and then you wake up 10 30 and say kai i'm asleep ma you say let me just stretch a little 30 minutes stretch a little you wake up and see that it's three o'clock. I say, oh well, I mean, let's let me take advantage of the night time, and it's already morning. And you will first feel bad, but after a few days, you become comfortable. And guess what? Satan will never strike you. He's not a fool. Listen, call Satan a deceiver. You are right. Call Satan an accuser. You are right. Call him a fool. You are wrong. Satan has an advantage of age. He is very old. Very old. Hallelujah. Very old. 
and he can take advantage. He has seen Moses, Adam, Abraham. He's lived through dispensations and he has studied mankind as an entity. He has studied our vulnerability, the spiritual wear and tear that befalls men. Listen to my message, why revivals die. The mystery of the humanity of men. How the humanity of men can interrupt the program of God in the life of a man. If he does not sustain a system in the spirit to keep him in check. The Bible says by the strength of an ox is more good. By the strength of an ox. Hallelujah. Your prayer life. There are many of us here. I know it and I can discern by the spirit that our prayer lives are dying. Carelessness is a dangerous thing in the spirit. It's worse than immorality. I'm telling you. Carelessness. Gradually, gradually. You lose spiritual standards. And it is very subtle. One week. You have not prayed. You have not done anything. Satan will never attack you. He's not a fool. It's like a spiritual meter. He's just allowing it to go down. There are pastors who don't pray. They snort their way to the poopy. Snort their way back. Rema is still coming. That's what happened to Samson. Samson slept with a prostitute. Immediately after that, he removed the city gate. Satan kept quiet and left him. Delilah, that girl, when she came, Samson, she now asked Samson, what's the source of your strength? He lied to her. She now tested it. You see how he was spiritually dead? Because a man who is spiritually alive would have picked the spirit behind that beauty now he was carnally minded the bible says to be spiritually minded is life eternal and to be carnally minded is what death right and then to be spiritually minded is life and peace many of us our lack of prayer have made us foolish because we don't discern things spiritually again when people annoy you, you used to check things from the realm of the spirit. But right now you have been depraved physically. You respond to things sensually. And that's the realm of Satan. You camp around the flesh realm, he will finish you. You can be jumping around and a new creation in Christ till you die as if Jesus didn't die for you. Because it takes understanding. Hallelujah. Prayer life. We must be spiritual people. All of a sudden, when your parents want to get serious with God, something just happens to their finances. Something just happens. And you think it's your father or mother that are fighting. No, no. It's a strategy from hell. He knows that for as long as there is abundance, there is now time to seek the face of the Lord. So he comes up with a system to take you away from the prayer place. He knows. Hallelujah. Prayer. Number three, the third thing that suffers, many of you think I'm going to say the word of God. No, the third thing, let me tell you, the word of God can still be moving around in your life while you are dying. It's one of the, it's one of the biggest arsenals of Satan's deception because the biggest area of confusion in a believer's life is his understanding of what the word of God is. Satan will not stop you from reading this. He will say continue. He can use this and destroy you because we don't even have an idea of what the word of god is we think proximity to the bible i'm reading ezekiel i'm reading proverbs that means that i'm getting it so he preoccupies you with it the third thing satan attacks when he wants to destroy you is relationships he kills your connection to people who have the power and the grace removes you from your spiritual family. Removes you from the company of men and women who can take advantage of their secret place and cover for you while you catch up spiritually. He takes you away from people. Listen, solitude is different from isolation. When Satan wants to destroy a man, he cuts off that spiritual grafting and you are alone. 
It's usually pride that keeps us in that position. And when he strikes you, one of the chief ways he does it is he creates a reason for you to fight with everybody who can minister to you spiritually. It's, an, it's a dangerous attack. I'm showing you deep spiritual things. So all of a sudden, you are in prayer department. You start having a problem with your HOD. You start having a problem with the assistant HOD. You start having a problem with the way they pray. It's like we are taking too much time. He uses offense. You see that? And you will usually find one or two pe persons to agree with you. And say, so you, man, you are observing it. Honestly, me too. I've been keeping quiet. But this thing, will we keep quiet like that? You think it's a solidarity forum. But you are dying. Because he's cutting you. I have talked with many people. And I can show you how the devil got advantage of them the bible says we are not ignorant of his strategy the word stratomai his his methodology satan has a skill there is a way he does it he isolates you and keeps you in a position where that spiritual bond is no longer there and it is difficult for somebody to even discern your pain. Because you see, the beauty of brotherhood is that our discernments are connected. There are times that this brother is about to fall. And God will just show Benga a dream. And you say, Kai, uh, Femi, I don't know. Don't be offended though. I saw something. But when that isolation goes, he uses offense. Number two, he uses dishonor. Dishonor. Dishonor is a key. That Satan uses to cut you away from your source of blessing. Dishonor. Is God helping us? There are many of us. You may be here. But that connection is no longer there. There are no seeing eyes. There are no hearing ears. If the devil pushes you, he pushes you to the sea until you go and fall down. It takes power. So he attacks your relationship. Listen. Do all you can within your power to maintain relationships that bless you spiritually. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? I'm teaching you something that will bless you. Unbelievers know this. They guard jealously their relationships with people, colleagues around, authorities over their lives that can bless them spiritually because they understand that there is a mystery of their continuity that on the strength Elisha knew this and he could cheaply carry the mantle of Elijah and say, if my own personal faith cannot pass this, where is the God of Elijah? Many of us do not understand this. Hallelujah. And certain things that can come cheap in our lives, we struggle over it aimlessly because there is no understanding. Please guard relationships, especially spiritual relationships. They have a lot to do in your life. There was a gentleman that I didn't see for a long time. And then one day I saw him and I looked at him. I said, ah, how are you doing now? And the guy looked at me he said apostle are you free i said no 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 i'm on my way going somewhere but i mean just talk to me give me a summary he said there's no way i can summarize what has happened in my life there is no way i can summarize it and he was almost crying i said what's wrong and he said apostle if i tell you anything has gone right in my life i'm lying there was a time in that guy's life years ago he insulted me and said certain things and i kept quiet i had to pray for him because see the anointing is a double-edged sword I, I i felt really sad for him and i looked at him i said me i don't curse people it never comes out of my no i don't curse people however there are side effects of certain things i looked at him i said ah i thought you were doing well he said nothing had worked in his life nothing and i said no 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 this cannot happen I want to bless you. I want to speak over your life. No job. No headway. You enter a relationship. The lady is happy. You start talking about marriage. She will stop picking your call. And all of that. 
met one prophet who told him to bring 150,000 borrowed 150,000 brought it nothing happened that's the price you pay for ignoring not having discernment to ignore spiritual relationships cheap ladders that you can climb please pay attention to what I'm telling you so the devil destroys your life offense dishonor destroys your life with it tonight as we pray I like your heart to be set for an encounter with power there are people inside there are so many people I see them right to the back outside wherever you are never mind where you are I remember in 2004 I was scattered in a crowd like this standing close to a pregnant woman in Reinhard Bonke's crusade desperately coveting the anointing for the baptism of the Holy Spirit this pregnant woman will lean on me and at a point I'll say madam please please I've been standing here too yeah not I mean I'm not I'm but I insisted and I had a vision that was my first vision of the Holy Spirit not Jesus I saw a bird you've heard it me share it a bird that would be as big as this room with silvery wings it was just hovering round hovering round Reinhard Bonke was about to take water so that he would start ministering to be honest with you the revelation he shared it's not if I share that thing here you will sleep you will just say Kai please Abba, Apostle what's wrong with you How, where did you lose all this revelation let's play another message Seth, if there's nothing to say offense you will now come there and say Kai this man my eyes was glued to him because I knew what I came for see do you know why some people never receive they don't know why they come into God's presence so they come and say ah, this guy why did he combine yellow and green how is that your business come and be focused as have hazard as the person is he's receiving you are there bitterness offense distraction I remember when her bunker was drinking water to start ministering to people I saw that bird moving around and the spirit of the Lord took me to Genesis chapter 1 right from verse 1 and 2 and the spirit of God hovered around the face of the waters and then he began to pray my goodness there were baptisms there were miracles and the Lord taught me that this is how miracles happen you never speak until you can discern the movement of the spirit the union between not the presence the movement of the spirit and your words give birth to a child called the miraculous see that revelation alone has brought bread to my life that revelation because you will be able to bless people release the power of god again and again there are people here with all kinds of things please make sure as we pray you will pray every chain and every nonsense every manifestation of every yoke upon your life we are just starting off tonight isaiah 10 27 and then we'll pray And it shall come to pass in that day which day the day your faith tells you is the day it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from thy shoulder and his yoke from off your neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing a lady sent me a text this morning in one of the sessions I'm going to be sharing with you the mystery of oppression before we pray i will show you certain things you can look at your life and your family and know that this one is not just the issue of submitting prayer request this is an issue of stretching through like they say take this drug two in the morning two in the afternoon two in the night they say repeat for how many days five days 
After three days, it will look like nothing is happening. But on the fourth day, that fire will be too much for any devil. And you will start seeing things manifest in your life. Have you seen things happen like that? You keep taking the drugs. After three days, you are even doubting. I hope this drug is not fake. You don't know what is happening internally. By the fourth day, you will wake up with health. And you'll be surprised. That's how it is spiritually. Brothers and sisters, there is the yoke of bondage. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The yoke of bondage is real. It is upon lives, destinies, families. I have seen it. I saw it in my own family. I saw it in my own life. The yoke of bondage. There are yokes upon people that misrepresents them. No matter how good your intention is, you are trying to be nice to the guy. He says, you have come to destroy my life. He say, it's, it's, it's an operation of darkness. You can pray it away. What you sit down and tolerate, <laughs> one day go better, it will never change. Never, ever change. Time does not change anything. It takes prophecy. It takes anger in the spirit to say, Lord, I'm contending with you. I'd like you to see this place as, as a tabernacle of God's glory for the next seven days. We are going to pray that it will please the Lord for his presence to rest upon this ground. That within these seven days, all kinds of things will be possible. We'll be taking testimonies every day. Please make sure as God gives you remarkable testimonies, you submit it. I think some three ladies, they are here. They sent me a text that there was a lady who was having an issue of oppression. And they wanted her to see me. I said, I, I don't have that time. Please pray for her. They prayed for her and I was told that her brother, was it her brother or so, died yesterday of the same issue. If Satan cannot strike you, he will look for somebody around your life that he will strike in such a way that it will hit you. Brothers and sisters, he spake a parable, Luke 18 verse 1, to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Men ought always to pray and not to faint. We are going to be praying for an encounter with the spirit of power. For the next maybe 20-25 minutes of we are going to pray in tongues. You are not asking for anything. You are not discussing anything. You are not filled with the Holy Spirit. In this atmosphere, you prepare your heart to receive and continue. Please, we are going to pray. After that, I will begin to direct us on specific prayer requests. And we are going to pray. Prophetic prayers. I like you to say it must work for me. Please shout it inside and outside. It must work for me. Yes. It doesn't work for everybody. The Bible says, blessed is she that believes. It said, for unto her, there shall be a performance of those things that are spoken. Blessed is she that believes. We are really going to pray. Please, I'd like you to take on that priestly robe and wrap yourself with it. And say, Lord, grace to strike a chord in the spirit. Hallelujah. Grace to strike a chord in the spirit grace to stretch myself and pray in the spirit it's a time of fasting it's a time of prayer many of you from this prayer you are going to begin to have visions and, and encounters visions that you used to have before you will see them being restored rise up on your feet everybody before we pray just lift your hands hallelujah Everyone inside and outside, lift your hands for me. Hallelujah. 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 Oh
mighty presence holy the custodian of the power of god holy spirit holy Confront the darkness in my life. I welcome you to end the confusion in my life. Hallelujah. Listen. Jesus said. He says, you have not because you ask not. Listen, you have not because you ask not. I'm intending to give you an encounter with power. Not just power to touch people to fall down. Real spiritual power. Demonstratable grace. hallelujah hallelujah listen i hunger and thirst for you in a dry and weary land express your desire i hunger and thirst for you in a dry and weary land for all I want is you. All I want is you. I hunger and thirst for you. I hunger and thirst for you. In a dry and weary land. I hunger and thirst for you. Dry and weary land. For all I want is you. Hallelujah. Listen. Before Koinonia started, when I went on my retreat, the Lord gave me an instruction. I spent 72 hours. My eyes did not see the sun. The sun. The sun. And after the three days, I knew the power for the next level of ministry had come. And that no devil, brothers and sisters, it takes powers to command signs and wonders. It takes power. The power that can draw men to come and see what is happening. It takes power to see the unseen. Hallelujah. I pray for supply of grace. Even as we begin to pray. I pray for supply of grace in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Worshippers, you are going to pray. We are going to pray in the spirit, maybe for a few minutes. After that, the media will take over because all of you must join. And so the media will take over and just project worship so that those inside and outside, you will get a comfortable position and i like you to pray. We are not giving any prayer point for now until I tap the mic then you come back and then I'll begin to lead us prophetically as we pray. Lord, let there be supply of grace. Supply of grace. If there is anyone here who is tired of where you are spiritually and you know that it will take power for you to move to the next level, please open your mouth. 
and begin to pray in the spirit. Don't do man of God tonight. There's no prophet, no pastor, no nothing. Let's 
situation straight result straight result encounter open up your heart open up your heart pray encounter with a strange order of power Hallelujah. You alone are worthy. Lord, you are worthy of my praise. You alone, you alone, you alone are worthy. Lord, you are worthy of my praise. For you reign on high. Lord, you are worthy of our praise. You alone are worthy. Lord, you are worthy of my praise.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When a man encounters the power of the Holy Spirit, you will command a strange order of results. Strange order of results. You will watch sickness disappear. It's not by trying. You will see how the influence of the Spirit superimposes your mortality. Your life becomes a sign. Make no mistakes about it. A man can be overshadowed. He said, how shall these things be? Seeing that I know not a man. He said, the power of the highest shall overshadow you. Hallelujah. Very quickly, please bring out the communion very fast so that we can we we'll have to find a way of organizing it so that there are so many people. Um, next week, we'll make sure that we'll try to work on it. Please, the relevant departments. It may not be easy for us to adopt this method that we're doing again because the crowd is too much. And um, I hope we'll be able to work it out. Maybe for today, we'll see how we can work it out. But another time, we may have to just work it out so that we don't save so much time. Hallelujah something strange will happen to you revelation chapter 5 please we're still going to pray all right guys that's all right so you stand up and join the prayer media please get set you would give us from there revelation chapter 5 i want us to pray before we take the communion um welfare department and the rest we're going to have to be very very i know that the cops may not go around there are thousands of people in this place outside those outside are much more than those inside um so make sure that there are people serving them outside and if you can create an extra point for the over, other overflow the third and the third the second and the third one so that they can match together and then we have this side coordinate yourselves but don't get carried away you'll be praying the fire of god is very strong in this place Revelations 5 verse 12. Okay. No problem. Let's, let's turn there. Mm. I want to share with you a mystery of the blood. I tell you there's fire burning in this place. Revelations 5 verse 12. It says... Where are we? 5 verse 12. Saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the lamb that was what? Slain. To receive, list them, number one. Number two. Number three. Number four, Friends. number five, Honor. number six, Glory. number seven. Yes. All these seven things, he received them. And it was his blood that made it possible. That's why he said it was in his being slain that he got the access to receive. He saw it, but he could not receive it because of the sin of man. And the Bible said qualified is the lamb. Qualified is the lamb. To receive because he was slain every time you partake of this blood and body don't just know that oh you are part of Christ uh -uh. you have come as a part to receive and we're picking just one today there are seven of them today to receive what power hmm. worthy is the lamb qualified is the lamb that has received for us the first in the list is power so as you are partaking of this don't think you are taking wine and wafers this will not feed you you know paul was speaking to the people in first corinthians 
because they were playing games with this. Some of them started drinking the wine. They were getting drunk. They were just throwing this. You can carry this and behave foolishly and just throw it in your mouth as if no, you can come with such an anointing. I'm going to pray on this. This is wafers. This is drink or juice or soap or whatever it is. But when it is prayed upon, it's a mystery that when you believe, it's like an initiation. It will bring you into power. Power. Any power that the gates of hell does not recognize is illegitimate. Let me tell you something. The true proof of power is not just that you have money and you are wearing nice clothes. He said, Paul, I know. Jesus, I know. We see the symbol of the authority. Paul, I know. But you, we don't see this at work in your life. We are going to pray just for the next 10 minutes while they arrange this. Worship, you give us the song. Just keep this verse projected. If you can, if you cannot, then just play the song and we are going to pray. Listen, this prayer is strategic. I'm going to lead you, you pray, and then we we'll all pray together. Hallelujah. I'd like you to say after me, in the name of Jesus. Name oh, no, 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 no. Those outside participate. Say, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. By, the Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. I've been redeemed. I've been redeemed. Saved. saved. And I have access, I have access. To, the to the very life of Christ. I declare, I declare before principalities, before powers, before powers that, I that I understand the mystery, the mystery of, the of the blood and the body of Christ. Body of Christ. And I declare, I declare a release every from every legal hold every legal over, my life. over my life. The price, the price has been fully paid and I make a demand by the blood of Jesus. Release me and let me go. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Release me. What is the lamb? What is the Oh, I must go free. I must go free ordinances of darkness enchantments of the evil ones by the blood by the blood by the blood there is no darkness in jesus there is no oppression in jesus i am a partaker of his divine nature by the substitutionary sacrifice of Christ Jesus, I place a demand. Please pray against ordinances, power to crush darkness. Are you praying those outside? Hallelujah. 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 Job said, He will deliver you in five things. He said, Yes, yeah, six things. One of the things He will deliver you from is the scourging tongues of men. Listen. Listen. The lives of people come under plague. As a result of enchantments. The speakings of men. Words have prophetic implications. Are we together now? There are men carrying words over their lives. Yes, you are born again. Yes, you are praying in tongues. But the Bible calls it the scourging tongues. Like you flog a man. A man can use words. And program another man's destiny. Are we together? Say after me, shout it. Say in the name of Jesus. Say it again in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Tonight, Tonight, I come against, I come against every, pronouncement, every pronouncement, every enchantment, every enchantment 
spoken over my life and my destiny in the name of Jesus every pronouncement in my lineage any pronouncement programmed into my spirit to make me fail to bring hardship in my life by this encounter with power I subdue that pronouncement lift your voice and begin to cast it every enchantment speakings of men out of their anger the mother of Jabez she named him Jabez she bore him in sorrow she programmed his destiny pray 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 Landa kata pras kata barato koshu, opri goto soto pekete, skapara teke lemo soto badia daha, skapara te bolorabos, makata tata karabos, embre teke tele poko subada. I reject it. I reject it. I reject it. I reject it. I refuse to receive it. Every speaking upon my life, I reject it in the name of Jesus. Take what we are saying seriously. We are warring with prophecy. The scourging tongues of men, the speakings of men in their anger, the speakings of men in their rage, the speakings of men based on the advantage of age, the speakings of men. Hallelujah. I tell you, many things are shifting in the spirit. One more prayer. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Everything I've involved myself in that has become a legal ground listen just pay attention to what i'm telling you i'm leading you there is an anointing on me we are not just reciting poems some of you are just standing and looking foolishly just pray with all your heart please there's time for play there's time to be serious god is unlocking destinies say it again in the name of jesus everything i've been involved with that has become a legal access for Satan, demons, curses in my life. I declare that the blood of Jesus speaks mercy over my life. The blood of Jesus speaks mercy over my mistakes. The blood of Jesus using this and everyone as a point of contact. I leave this before you. May this warfare, oh God, lose its earthly significance. No longer becoming just a biological material. May the power of the Spirit come upon it. And in the name that is above all names, I stretch my hands upon this juice, this drink. 
by the power of the Holy Spirit everyone that takes it dreams of encounter vision please don't go back and be watching others you go back and begin to prophesy please if you have taken it go back and prophesy the power of God is already touching people Jesus please outside participate say in the name of Jesus this night I decree judgment in the camp of the enemy listen say in the name of Jesus the blood of Jesus has become power in my life I declare that the blood speaks in my dreams speaks in my life every manifestation of witchcraft and darkness through any means in my life it comes under attack tonight lift your voice and pray Lord tonight an end comes to those dreams those demonic encounters that bring bad luck to your life those dreams you have been afraid of sharing with people because of the nasty things that happen I decree judgment I decree judgment tonight instruments of vengeance I release instruments of warfare in the spirit I engage the blood I engage the blood hallelujah hallelujah last prayer point say in the name of Jesus every testimony that should have manifested in my life by now and is hanging in the realm of the spirit by the blood of Jesus I command you to manifest lift your voice and pray everything that has left heaven must manifest in your life pray 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 every testimony that has left the throne and is yet to appear in my life I command it to appear hallelujah hallelujah aside from those still coming to receive please everyone lift your hands high to the heavens this is just day one please it's paining me because there are certain faces that I know are not here this night and I'm wondering why I've seen people by the spirit I know we are many but I know people by the spirit there are people's breakthroughs that should be here please don't miss tomorrow for any reason you see how the crowd is I'm sure tomorrow may be twice this number because people are in serious problems there are family members you need to drag once you come here media just let from 7 7 30 let worship just begin to play as you come find a corner and just begin to pray your heart out to the God who hears you. Hallelujah. Father, you have instructed this by your spirit. Because this is the season when you are taking us to another dimension. We are believers. Lord, we have taken off your blood and your body and praying tonight let there be a reaction in everybody's life in the name of Jesus Christ 
Lord, give people visions and strange dreams tonight. Some of you, by this communion, you will watch it like a movie. The secret behind the hardship of your life. You will see it like a movie. Ancient mysteries that have tied your family. Oh, let this be a night of revelation. I command it in the name of Jesus. You will wake up tomorrow knowing the reason why things have been happening and what to do about them. I pray for you that every spirit that has been attached to your life manifesting as snakes, animals, men, women coming in the faces of people to molest you, to sleep with you, to press you. I stand tonight under this apostolic anointing and in the name that is above all names, I judge them tonight. 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 Listen. I tell you, many of you will go to bed and hear from home your loved ones telling you, I don't know what is happening, but this night, things are happening from the village, from everywhere. Fire burning everywhere. Lift your hands. One more prayer. Every altar that is being serviced through witchcraft, that represents a spiritual portal where the souls of men are kept to ransom burning strange fire when men sleep in the night and making invocations upon their soul except I be not a servant of God I stand upon my office in this apostolic and prophetic anointing tonight those altars catch fire tonight those altars catch fire. They catch fire. They catch fire. Anyone whose name, whether you or your loved ones, is on any altar, this night, both the altar and the servicer will not see tomorrow morning. I prophesy it both the altar I don't care who is servicing it I command instruments of judgment I release instruments of judgment I release instruments of judgment see let me tell you it will do some of you like a dream that tomorrow by this time you will see testimonies that will scare you. That's when you will know that Satan does not just let people go. Hallelujah. Through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies everyone that belongs to this ministry and partakes of this grace and his life has refused to move forward. Everyone, those online, families that are partakers of this grace, this night, that chain, that cord that keeps you in one place, we burn it to ashes in the name of Jesus. That chain, that cord that holds you, keeps you in one place. You are moving, but not making any advancement. I burn it to ashes. I burn it to ashes. I burn it to ashes. Thank you, Jesus.
Lord, we give you all the praise. Lord, we give you all the praise. 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 You all the praise. Hallelujah. Listen. Some of you will go back to your rooms and see physical things. Physical things. I'm telling you this. Physical things. You will say, where did this come from? Physical things. From dead animals to all sorts of physically. I know what I'm saying. That's when you will know that life is not for people who are playing games. It takes power to reign. It takes power to subdue the voices of the wicked. The Bible says they will not sleep. They lock themselves privately and say, let us wait for their blood. There are men like that. Or it takes power. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we give you all the glory tonight. Very quickly. I know that our time is gone. But there are people inside and outside. You've seen what God is doing. But you need to rededicate your life. Please keep standing. We're almost done. We're not taking time. And there are buses to convey you. So please listen. There are people here. You need to surrender your heart totally to Jesus. There are others you've given your life to Christ. But your life has gone haywire. And within these seven days of fire. God wants to restore you. Please wherever you are. Inside and outside. In any of the overflows. Make your way to the front. I want to pray with you. You are saying man of God. Thank you for making this call. I've been waiting. So that my soul will be redeemed. So that my life. The fire will return. May God bless you. Make your way to the front. Don't wait for anybody. You must be the first person. God bless you. Please run like there's fire on the mountain. Don't just walk and waste our time. Run, 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 run. You are there. You are seated. The Holy Ghost is saying come out. It means he's talking to you. Make your way and come out. There are people there. No matter how far. Any of the overflows. Make your way. Come out. Give your life to Jesus Christ. Rededicate your life to Christ. Some of you are still roaming about. Please if you are a friend here. Don't intimidate your friend. Allow them to come and give their lives to Jesus. God bless you. We came in group. You won't go to heaven in group. Make your way and come out as an individual. Can we, can we appreciate them as they come? Motivate them. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for coming out. Some of you are giving your life to Jesus Christ for the first time. Some of you have given your life to Christ before, but your life has gone haywire. And tonight, part of the things that I trust God that you will do tonight is the resolution to leave nonsense, friends, in the name of Jesus Christ. I am one person who believes that your salvation is child's play until it directly affects your friends and your association. Bible says, do not be deceived. Bad company can corrupt good morals. So there are friends you need to tell them send them a text this night tell them i got into seven days of fire and believe me part of my resolutions i love you but you are no longer my friend because i've seen what you have done in my life i love you but bible says two cannot work together except they agree i don't agree with you and that means we cannot work together love is a command listen relationship is not there's nowhere that says you must associate with everybody some of you drink, some of you smoke, some of you do all kinds of things. You get born again and then you meet the other people and they lure you. And you don't want to leave them. No, please leave them. Leave them. Let these seven days be fruitful days in your life. Please lift your right hand and say after me, Lord Jesus, I love you and I believe you with all my heart. This night, I receive you as my Lord and Savior. I declare that sin has no power over my life. I'm a child of God. My name is in the Lamb's book of life. From today, my life goes forward and upward in the name of Jesus keep your hands lifted father thank you for my brothers and sisters our mothers and fathers people who have come up to surrender their lives totally father let it not just be an emotional activity i truly pray that from tonight 
their fire will step into a new dimension i break you free from every habit every association and everything that is not consistent with the way of christ i pray for you from the depth of my heart may the lord take you from glory to glory in the name of jesus christ amen and amen i congratulate you just one quick instruction there's a gentleman waving his hands with a lime tie i'd like you to follow him and um they will have your details i assure you that we'll reach you and then we'll add you to our database we'll be praying for you and we'll minister to you uh, make sure that you don't miss tomorrow thank god we have an opportunity seven days at a stretch and god is doing great things so he will have your details just walk up to him hello beloved in christ we hope this message was a blessing to you i would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us to tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and then if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching in the name of jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise i decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain